Danny Flexen from seconds out here with Joe Mullander, going to challenge for the British middleweight title against Liam Williams on March the 8th. I think you stole the hearts of a lot of the audience today at the press conference when you said, what was it, um, I wear Slazinger socks and drive a Fiesta? Just a basic, I'm just your basic geezer. Like, I'm not, like Liam Williams is a superstar, he's the name. I ain't no name, he probably had to Google me. I'm your, I'm your normal fella who just gets in the ring as a fight and wants to get paid. So listen, I want to win a British title, I'm going in there to win, but I ain't no superstar. All this is irrelevant to me, do you know what I mean? So I want to get in there and have a fight. All of this, you also said um, he's levels above you. Does all of that help you in some way, though, that it kind of boosts you a bit and think, right, I'm going to upset the odds here? He's the one who's the favourite. Yeah, listen, he's the favourite. The truth of the matter is, you can bleep this out, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Listen, he's a man, I'm a man, we're going to have a fight. He is leagues above me, ability-wise. I've either got to walk through him and have a fight with him for 12 rounds, or... He puts me away. If he does, I'll shake his hand. Well, we have a fight. What's the problem? You're a consistent middleweight. He's only had one fight away. Surely that's an advantage. Uh, listen, all that comes back. That's that's a load of shit. Listen, he's probably bigger than me naturally. I don't. I walk around at 12 stone. So it comes down to on the night, do you want it? Are you willing to go through what you need to go through? All of this, oh, he's a light middle. It don't mean nothing. It don't mean nothing. He's, he's, a, cl he's a class fighter. He's fought at a higher level than me. It don't mean, it don't mean nothing to me. Like, come, let's just have a fight. You've had wins of your own, though, that are pretty impressive. Lee Markham obviously stands out in recent times. What does someone like Liam Williams bring to the table that Lee Markham or some of the other guys you've beaten don't? Why is he so much better than them? Listen, I ain't reading too much, innit? I've known Lee for a long time. I rate Lee very highly. Lee's a big boy, uh, very underrated. Liam's been the name for a long time like a name in boxing like I said he probably had to google me he probably didn't even know who I was all up in Wales all giving it who's he well we'll see won't we? we'll see who's he we'll have a fight and then hopefully I'll get their respect but all this it's irrelevant do you know what I mean I don't mean it's better like Royal Albert or it's all irrelevant ring's a ring if he's better than me he beats me doesn't he one thing I did want to ask you about, kind of felt a bit sorry for you. After the Lee Churchill fight, I think most people know now, you had a four-month ban because of a, a stimulant that they'd found, which you knew nothing about. Yeah, well, even UCAD said it was no significant fault of yours because it wasn't on the label. So have you got kind of a message to send out to other athletes about being more, I don't know, careful, doing more research or just not trusting certain companies? I don't know. I mean. Listen, to be honest, I hire, hired a like strength conditioner, nutritionist, which has worked with me for a long time. Double OCD, checks everything. He checked it, there was nothing. It was just, it was just to like rehydrate after a weigh-in. How the hell am I supposed to see like, I'd, I'd check it, he checked it, it weren't on the label, like, and then people calling me a cheat. Listen, I ain't a cheat. I don't need to cheat. You don't get only a four month ban if you're a cheat. Like, but they even said, so like, why, why, are you, why are you slapping me with a ban? But the problem, what I don't like, is people then just, assume and go you're a drug cheat well, mate I ain't is like, there any advice you can give to avoid what happened to you because it does seem like there's no way out of it and like you've just been the fool guy how can I advise someone to check a label because I checked the label and nothing was on it so the, the, the thing is someone's going to go oh yeah well you see, everyone, everyone didn't know everyone didn't know well the thing is my case I actually didn't yeah, and the company that makes it is actually closed down as well, which obviously says they're saying dodgy going on. So, of course, and I, to be honest with you, being ignorant, I didn't know either. I just, my nutritionist give me, you take this after the weigh-in, well, I'll take it then. That's why I hire a nutritionist. So with what you're saying is when it annoys you that people do say that sort of stuff, which is unfair, and I agree with you, is this fight yet another chance to kind of throw that in their face? Because obviously you're completely clean. Don't matter to me. Listen, I've got two kids at home. That's all I give a shit about. I want to better myself, I want to better my kids, make them proud. That's it. They want everyone else's opinion. It's shit. Don't care. Do you work outside of boxing? Uh, I'm at a level now where not really, no. Nah. So, listen, Lear minds me out. I'm going to get a job, aren't I? As simple as that. Give us an idea of the upside. If he irons you out, you'll have to get a job. But if you win a British title and there's obviously more big fights to come, what does that, how would that change your life? Listen, I started boxing at, I, I didn't put a pair of gloves on till I was 22. 
I had my first amateur fight, I think the end of 23, turned pro at 25. So to win an English title and be fighting for a British title at the, in the middleweight division, I've, I've done all right. Do you know what I mean? So it's not like I'm, I've been fighting boys who've been amateur for years and Li Liam, Liam technically is a 10 times better fighter than me. So, but I'm in a ring with him, I'm going to have a fight with him. But all of that, I don't, I don't let it get to me. Do you know what I mean? Press conferences, Royal Albert, or it's all irrelevant. Listen, I'll do it for one reason. I'll do it to better myself and to better my kids. That's it. I'll let all of this go over me head. That's kind of what I'm asking. So if you win and it elevates you to another level, what will that mean for your family's life? Like, what will change? Well, I live in a masonette. That means I can go and buy an house. That's why I do it. That's honesty. Everyone can go, oh, I do it, yeah, it's an iconic venue. Uh, listen, I fight in a car park for the money. I don't give a shit. I don't care if it's at the Royal Abel. I want to win and better myself. That's the truth. And if, if that means, oh, God, he's blunt or whatever, that's the truth. That's the truth. I want to better myself. I want to better my family. That's why I do it. I don't do it for anything else. I want to win a British title for my gym. Because we all train in Dagenham out of a squash colt. Jamie Williams, Legends Gym. For them to have a British title in it from nothing is an achievement. But for me personally, it's I want to better myself. And final question. If you do win the British title, when you come to the press conference for your first defence, will you wear a suit? No. <laughs> I expected that one. Really appreciate your time.